In this how to we are going to learn how to implement time based caching in ASP.NET. In earlier how to uh, if you remember we learned how to catch the uh, data uh, uh, into the server using the catch object but that catch remains in the server unless the computer has been restarted or the application has been restarted. Now in this how to we are going to learn that how to catch the data into the server memory for a specific time let's say for 5 minutes or for 10 minutes or for 1 hour or and so on. So for that what we are going to do is that we are going to first keep one grid view here. So as you can see that I have a grid view. Sorry let me just copy and paste the grid view. So here is my grid view on the page and in the code behind let me just copy and paste this code behind as well. And here is the namespace that I'm going to use and then and this is the code behind code. Yes and we have few more codes. After copying and pasting I will explain this. Okay, looks like we are done. Yes. Now here what we have is first we have a uh, underscore con str page level uh, variable where we are retrieving the database connection string from the web.config file. And then uh, in the page load event we are checking if it is not post back then we are uh, calling the get data method. In the get data method we are uh, checking for the catch of personal detail data. If it is not null then we are simply getting the data from the catch and unboxing into the data table and storing into the table data table variable. And if this catch of personal detail data is null, it means that there is nothing into it, then we are using the edu.net code to uh, retrieve the data in and uh, filling it into the data table object. And uh, then what we are doing is that we are using the catch.insert method. Remember that in order to use uh, the, the time based caching you need to use cache.insert method and that the first parameter will be the key, the second parameter will be the value and the third parameter will be the dependency object because here we, ha we do not have any dependency as we want to uh, expire the cache data based on the, on, on the duration. So that dependency will be null here and then this is the absolute expiration means after how many seconds or after how many minutes whatever time you, you will specify the catch data should expire. So here in this case I am writing that date time dot now dot add seconds of 5 means I am I'm, I'm instructing that after 5 seconds the data stored into this uh, catch with personal detail data key should expire and the sixth parameter is basically and the sliding expiration means whether the expiration policy should be sliding or not. Now once we will use the insert method then what will happen is that this particular statement will basically add the uh, data table into the catch for 5 seconds. So within 5 seconds when we will retrieve the data then the data will come from the catch otherwise after 5 seconds the data will come from the uh, database. So let me write a, a label here ASP label id equal to lbl message run equal, run equal to server and enable view state is equal to false. Now here we are writing that lbl message dot text equal to data coming from catch and here we are writing data coming from database. Now you might ask a question that we are inserting the data here. Now how to remove the data from the cache? Now let me run, uh, let me create one uh, button. Let's put button id equal to button submit, run it equal to server, text equal to remove from cache, on click equal to remove from remove cache. Now on click of this button what we are doing is that we are basically executing the server side method called remove catch and then 
we are using catch dot remove and the personal detail and then let us write a success message catch removed fine now let me run this page vvn browser first time the data is coming from the database next time it will come from the catch now let's wait for the 5 seconds because we have uh, uh, given the time for the 5 seconds so after 5 seconds when I will refresh the page then the data should come from the database again see the data is coming from the database and in case we want to remove the catch we will simply click on this remove from catch button and catch dot remove statement will fire and that will basically remove the personal detail data key from the catch key value from the catch so this is the way to basically uh, store the data into the cache for a specific duration of time and remove the data from the cache. In the next how to we are going to learn how to implement file dependency caching in ASP.NET. File dependency caching means that the data inside the cache will depend on a particular file and that file can be a XML file, text file or a log file. Okay, It can be any, any kind of file so for that what we are going to do is that first we are going to create an XML file so let me go ahead and create an XML file into this uh, project add new item and XML file and paste now in this XML file what we have is we have a departments root and under that there are many departments HR, finance, software engineering, quality assurance, manufacturing and sales okay then what we have is that we have a grid view on the page so let me put the grid view on the page here let me remove all the earlier content and then in the page load event again we are going to uh, get call the get a data method so let me do that I'm going to remove all my existing code from here okay and then we have this till here let me copy paste the code and then I will explain it okay now we do not need this database constraint now here what we are doing is that when the page will be loaded for the first time means it will not be post back then get data method will be called and in this get data method we are basically uh, using the xml file in this case xml file name is xml file dot xml so let me just change it here and using the data uh, set what we are doing is that but before I uh, proceed further what we are doing here is that we are creating a data set variable and uh, from the catch of XML data we are un trying to unbox and uh, if this da data set or variable will be null it means that there will be nothing into this particular cache then what we are doing is that we are instantiating the data set and then we are reading the XML file so d set means data set dot read xml and we are passing the file name as the parameter that will basically read the xml uh, data means this xml data into the data set and that data set what we are doing is that we are uh, inserting into the catch object by passing the xml data as the name it means that the key and then uh, the whole data set as the value and then we are uh, specifying the dependency here in case uh, the dependency is the xml file you can see that we are instantiating new depend new catch dependency and then file name and then that's it and we are specifying the get view data source as the data set and then we are calling the data bind method now here what will happen is that when this page uh, when this page will be loaded then first time naturally the catch of xml data will be null so the data will be read from the xml file and in the from the and the remaining request the data will come from the catch but in case we will modify the xml file then the, this cache will automatically expire and the data and the in the next request after modification of the xml file the data will again come from the xml and in the next request again the data will keep coming from the catch so in order to make it clear what we are going to do is that we are going to write something like this let me create one label here lbl message uh, net equal to server enable view state equal to false
and if it will come into this catch block then it means that data is coming from the XML file and if it is not it means that data is coming from the catch let me run this page now now here data is coming from the XML file now when I will refresh data is coming from the catch fine now if I will modify this XML file because it is a, a, a file dependency as you can see here so when I will refresh the page the data will again from the XML file and then after the next request it will again come from the catch when I will modify the XML file again then it will come from the XML file again and in the next request again that it will come from the catch so this is the way to basically use the file dependency